In the epic world of cryptocurrencies, a fierce battle is raging and the spotlight is on one of the most controversial warriors in the game, XRP. Once a promising asset is now making headlines for all the wrong reasons. So the question arises, is Ripple Labs in serious trouble? And will XRP make it to an all-time high again? In this video documentary, we'll discuss the XRP versus SEC lawsuit, including the SEC's allegations and Ripple's counterclaims. But before diving into the topic, we have an exciting announcement. There is a quiz challenge for our viewers in the middle of the video. Ripple Labs is a San Francisco-based company which was founded in 2012 to develop blockchain-based payment solutions. It was co-founded by Chris Larson and Jed McCaleb. Ripple's products, including XRP, a digital currency that was officially launched in June 2012 and quickly gained popularity among the blockchain community for its fast transaction and low fees. Eventually, Ripple's use of XRP was unique because it created a platform that allowed banks and financial institutions to use XRP to facilitate cross-border payments. Leading financial institutions like Santander, Standard Chartered and MoneyGram embraced Ripple's technology for revolutionizing cross-border transactions. With a market cap exceeding $140 billion, XRP surged as the third largest digital asset, trailing only Bitcoin and Ethereum. Unlike other cryptocurrencies, all 100 billion XRP coins were pre-mined, setting it apart from traditional mining. Before the lawsuit, XRP's value reached an all-time high of $3.84 in early 2018, surpassing Ethereum in market cap. However, XRP's future was called into question when the selling of 1.3 billion XRP occurred in the secondary market meaning that the transactions involved previously issued XRP tokens rather than directly from Ripple, the company behind XRP. All right, here is a quiz question for you. What was the initial reason for XRP's popularity among the blockchain community? Option A, its revolutionary consensus mechanism. Option B, fast transaction and low fees. Option C, extensive mining process. Comment your answer below and remember, the correct answer will be rewarded later. On 22nd December 2020, the SEC filed a lawsuit against Ripple Labs Incorporated and its creators Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson. The lawsuit accuses Ripple of conducting an illegal securities offering by selling 1.3 billion worth of XRP to retail investors. The SEC claims that XRP should be considered a security, not a currency. The distinction between security and currency is based on the Securities Act of 1933, which regulates assets like investment contracts or securities. However, the exact definition of an investment contract was not clear until a Supreme Court case in 1946, which introduced the Howey Test. The Howey test helps decide if something qualifies as an investment contract. Perhaps it's essential to pass the Howey test. Let's understand a bit about Howey test, as it consists of three key questions. First, has someone invested money? Second, is there a common enterprise which the buyer's success linked to the seller? Third, does the buyer expect profits to come primarily from the efforts of others? If the answer to all three questions is yes, then the asset is considered a security. In the SEC versus XRP lawsuit, the SEC defines XRP as a security because it meets the Howey's test criteria for investment contracts. So, does XRP comply with the Howey test? Well, that is still up for debate in the court. Further, the lawsuit alleges insider trading by Ripple Labs and its executives selling XRP with non-public regulatory information. As a consequence, XRP's value plummeted drastically, experiencing a more than 70% loss within a few days. While Ripple and its CEO Brad Garlinghouse have firmly denied the SEC's allegations and mounted a strong defense, they argue 
that XRP is not a security but a currency like Bitcoin and Ethereum. In its defense, Ripple lawyer John E. Deaton quoted June 2018 speech by former SEC director William Hinman who suggested that cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum were not securities. However, he did not mention XRP explicitly in his speech. While Ripple and its CEO Brad Garlinghouse have firmly denied the SEC's allegations and put up a strong defense arguing that XRP is a currency like Bitcoin and Ethereum, a lengthy legal process finally led to the unsealing of the Hinman documents on June 12, 2023. It included internal communications which hold importance in the Ripple vs SEC case adding a new dimension to the case. A pro-RP lawyer, James K. Fillon, tweeted that this ruling was seen as a victory for Ripple, leading to a slight recovery in the value of XRP. Furthermore, Ripple challenges the SEC's use of Howey test, claiming it doesn't apply to XRP as it is not an investment contract. Later, on July 13, 2023, U.S. District Judge Annalisa Torres ruled that Ripple did not violate federal securities laws when selling XRP on cryptocurrency exchanges, effectively considering XRP not a security for secondary transactions. This decision led to a 104% surge in XRP's price, dealing a blow to the SEC's claims. While admiring the decision of Judge Annalisa Torres, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse came forward with a bold tweet stating that We won. They lost. Despite this, the judge noted violations regarding direct sales to sophisticated investors leaving legal challenges ahead. On the 17th of July 2023, SEC Chair Gary Gensler expressed disappointment with the district court's decision on retail investors in the Ripple case but welcomed the ruling that found institutional token sales violated federal securities laws. How does the federal court ruling last week in the Ripple case impact your stance toward digital asset regulation? Uh, we are uh, pleased uh, from that decision recognizing uh, the, the importance of protecting investors on the institutional investors. And while disappointed on what they said about retail investors, uh, Despite a strong defense, the case's outcome remains uncertain. Here is the next question. Which financial institutions embraced Ripple's technology and utilized XRP for cross-border payments? Option A. JP Morgan Chase and Citibank. Option B. Bank of America and Wells Fargo. Option C. Santander, Standard Chartered and MoneyGram. Drop your answer below and we will reveal the correct answers and reward you shortly. While the XRP versus SEC case significantly impacted XRP's market value, causing a decline of over 70% after the lawsuit announcement. Initially getting delistings from Coinbase, Bittrex and OKCoin further affected its value too. Perhaps this lawsuit had a ripple effect not just on XRP but on the entire cryptocurrency market as many fears increased regulatory pressure on other cryptocurrencies. Despite many challenges, some exchanges still support XRP, offering hope for its future. Even though Ripple is currently fighting a legal battle, it continues to expand its partnerships with financial institutions worldwide. Recently, it collaborated with the National Bank of Egypt to offer faster and more affordable remittance services for Egyptians living abroad. Additionally, on February 11, 2021, Ripple partnered with Lulu International Exchange and Federal Bank in India, demonstrating its potential to enhance cross-border payments through RippleNet. While some crypto analysts predict a $10 price target for XRP as the lawsuits get settled. As the legal battle continues to unfold, it will be interesting to see how XRP's market value and Ripple's operations are impacted. What's your prediction for the Ripple versus SEC case? Will Ripple win? Or could it be doomsday for the cryptocurrencies? Pin down your thought in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the Coinpedia YouTube channel for more content like this.